So it's December 2023, and at this point I've only really been shooting film for about six months. So I decided to see if I could shoot, develop, scan and edit in the same day. As film photographers, there's so much sort of patience and waiting to get stuff developed and you know, you're sitting there sort of twiddling your thumbs, trying to remember what you shot, which is half the love of it, I guess. Um, that instant gratification of shooting digital, it's gone. So here I am leaving my house in South London. Set the alarm 4.30, I'm not a morning person. So that was already a bit of a feat. So I decided to make my way from Clapham Junction. So it's pretty empty, you've got some early morning commuters. And as you can see from the platform, it's pretty empty. And that's exactly what I wanted. It's my first time using the trigger as well, which is great, because you eliminate all the camera shake. And by that point in the morning, I'm probably about seven coffees down already, so the camera shakes, it's up there. I like these first two shots. Prefer the first from the platform, that was really nice. When you get a photo that seems to disappear into the distance, it's so much more engaging and interesting, and your eyes want to focus on it for longer. And there was just so much in the frame that seemed of interest. Whereas the stairs, it seemed a bit washed out. I don't know why the... It's nice to be able to blame things on the film, and it wasn't the film. It was clearly what I had done to it. Um, snapped the photo of the stairs as well, and hopped straight on the train, and we headed to Vauxhall. The train was pretty quiet. This guy over here was asleep. Straight away, as soon as I walked up the train, hop left, and I just saw this beautiful empty space. I like this first one. There's some good energy to it. You can see in the top right, there's this sort of white glow from this light that was on the wall, which is a really nice contrast because the orange starlights that you get off off Cine still uh, and the halations really pop and that contrast between the two is wicked. I really, really, really like this next shot. I don't know why some of the colours seem to shift from one photo to another and I think that's just how you expose things. But here you can see there's that empty bench on the right which almost would have been quite nice to have someone in it. But then again you get the five streaking lights above with the halations really popping at you and I just thought, I, I like the composition. I think when I got all the photos back this was one of the ones that I was like yeah, I really like this film stop. So we go down into the tube. The tube I was kind of hoping might be empty at that time, but that wasn't the case. On my way down to the tube, I saw a really nice opening of the stairwells heading up the escalators. And it was just about waiting for a moment when no one was there, so you can get that sort of empty feel and line up some symmetry and so on. I feel like I did an all right job. It could have been better, but it's not awful. So we then get onto the tube. I'm wearing about 17 layers, so within the first stop I've sweated a pint, which is lovely at 5am. Luckily, I wasn't with anyone, so it didn't really matter. Victoria was another place that I think it beat me. I didn't get it. I tried a couple there, there was this woman in the white jacket sort of half asleep. I mean, so was I nearly. And I didn't quite nail that. But I turned around and I tried another shot. Didn't love it, tried doing a slightly longer exposure didn't love it either. So once I'd nearly given up hope, I thought, I might as well just check and see if any trains are coming in. So I go over towards some of the platforms and what's great is the barriers are open. So that saved me £2.75. I see that there's these two platforms parallel to each other and I snap them both. I like this first one. I don't love it. And actually the two, considering they're right next to each other, are very different. Here's the second one. Although there's a bit more going on because there's a gap in the platform, I don't love the colours it produced on the train, the dirtiness between the slats and the roof. It almost feels like it's a bit hazy and there's just not really any info there, it's dirty. And I don't love that. But the first one, I think was great. So then I went back down to the tube and I headed towards the circus, where I'd finished my first roll of cine still. Because I shot some a week ago, which I still haven't seen any results of yet, so it felt like this was still my first time. And that was, some lights were turning on up north when I was with my girlfriend. We had a fire breather, we had Christmas lights turning on, some fireworks. Now that I've seen those images, they were okay as well. Probably not one that you're gonna show your friends or chuck in a portfolio. So once I'd changed that first roll of film, I swapped in the second roll. And unlike most photographers you see online, it took me around half an hour just to change the film. Sometimes I nail it and it takes me about a minute and a half and I feel like an absolute G, but didn't nail it. Didn't nail it, it was there for a good three or four tubes and people are just coming off. They're starting to really commute now and they're just looking at me thinking, what's this guy doing? All the little winding and I uh, got some funny looks, got away with it. You know, that's what we're there for. So just as I finished loading the film, I turn and I instantly see a really nice opportunity for a good shot down the side of a tube. And actually, I think it's turned out quite nice. Again, I really like the length of the shot, the halation of the lights going down the left-hand side, the yellow line on the floor following perfectly the tube with the open doors one by one. And overall, yeah, it's quite a nice image. 
almost packed down my tripod and I saw that the next tube was only one minute away. So I thought, I'll wait for that as well. And here's that shot. Again, none of these have come out amazingly so far. I kind of wish there was something a bit more interesting in terms of the post or something that was relevant to travel or London or so on, but. So once I was in Soho, it was a bit tired, it was a bit dead. There was no one really there yet. And it was still dark, no uh, sort of blue hour, nothing had really come about. And I decided I'm gonna walk to Piccadilly. I walked past this pub called the Devonshire. Never been, looks nice, but this one was just standing out. So I lined up the shot, caught it front on, and I really like how powerful and proud these screens are standing out, especially as it matches the foliage hanging over the top. Foliage, I never use that word. It is foliage, isn't it? When you get sort of loads of plants. And the way the light shine onto the Devonshire logo is great. Those golds are really punching through as well, and that kind of gives this sort of 3D pop, which I love. So I have seen all the images now, and this one is one of my favorites, and I'll definitely be going there for a pint or two. So this next one that I was lining up, which I thought would be the cliche nice. shot, should turn out quite nice, you can't really get it wrong. I did get it wrong. It was heavily underexposed, dirty, grubby, and the worst thing of all, I was standing in someone's wee. So that wasn't ideal. However, there was some good news. I turned to my left, can't let me down, it's Masala Zone. I'm assuming that's a lovely curry house. Not one of those sort of BYOBs, I reckon this one's a bit more upmarket. Now I really like this shot. I'm actually really pleased that there was someone in the frame. There was obviously a cleaner going in for an early morning cleanup. Now not only does it give the whole image a bit of scale, but actually it allows you to kind of paint a bit of a picture of what is actually happening. What that is, I don't know. I really like the reds and the way they're popping, and also that little bit of turquoise in the bottom left. Just adds a nice element to the image. That word's coming up. The halation on the right hand side is banging. It's really nice. I actually think this is a really lovely image. Now straight away, I kind of wish I'd got this side of this. A nice bit of motion blur would have made this next image because I don't love it. First of all, should have tilted up, framed a bit more of the building so there was actually some nice light hitting that. I suddenly felt a bit rushed and I think it's because I started to notice that that sort of early morning sun was starting to light up the sky just a touch and I was running out of time and I still had a load of stills I wanted to get done. Next up, Chinatown. Now Chinatown is great, especially when you photograph in the day. There's always so much going on there. The foods, the smells, the people. It's just an interesting place where your senses feel completely heightened. But as you can see here at night time, this guy walking past the right. It's a bit dark and gloomy and I was really lucky to have this black cab come past. But I grabbed a couple here, definitely prefer the one with the cab in it, and then I was on the go. And actually I really like my nose from this angle. But I decided to make my way back to Soho, but via Piccadilly again and I walked past this corridor which had a really nice glowing cinema sign. And when you're shooting Sydney still, you need to look out for those glowing signs. So here, I like it. Again, there's length to the image. There's not a lot going on. It's fairly simplistic. I'm not quite sure why, but it seems a bit more faded, this one. I don't think it's anything to do with the scanning process because you'll see that later on. But it just seemed to, I don't know, it was very different, but I really like it. It's, it's simple, it's clean. I kind of wish there was a subject in the middle walking towards or away would be quite nice but you can't win them all. So when I started to walk back, the Piccadilly sign was glowing onto this top box now. And it was quite cute, it was closed up. I kind of wish it was open because I'd been awake for a while at this point and actually I could have knocked one of those back. But I thought I'll grab it on my way past and I'll wait for the sign to be nice and bright so we get this nice glow. And it was quite nice. I kind of wish that black pillar wasn't in front of it, but then if it wasn't there, I think it would just look like someone's just dropped it there in AI. It just seems so random to be dropped there in such a historical landmark with all these stunning buildings around it. But Anyway, I've got a snap of it now. Don't know what I'm going to do with it. Next up, this really cool little bar that obviously isn't open this time of day, but it was just opposite the Devonshire, but on the other side. And I thought, it's getting a bit lighter. There's a nice glow to this. So I caught a quick image. I quite like the composition. I really like the glowing reds. And above that, I like the fact that it starts yellow from the left and slowly bleeds to blue. And I think that there's something in it. And then I turned around and I thought, I'm going to grab another one of the Devonshire. This is a nice angle. I don't think I like it as much as the first one, but the two side by side, it's a nice little collection. Not going to dwell on this next one. Bunch of line bikes, Joe and the Juice. It was a pretty mixed image, so we moved on to my most annoying moment of the day. So I came up to this parking lot, and it's a bit of a unique parking lot, and it's an absolute tip at the bottom, and I love that. There's something quite nice about sort of abandonment and sort of stuff that's been a bit run down and overused and so on and this is just it was a little area that's sort of untouched and uncared for and I thought it would make for a nice image 
And as you can see, the light is on, and that was going to bring a nice glow to the image. But that buggered off, which was really nice. That light just turned off. That's a fucking piss take. Really gutted about that. Because without that, it's just another bit of an average image. And so I'll rattle through these next ones because they also weren't great. Uh, grab this light outside the John Snow pub. Nice glow to it. Nothing much to the image. Flick past that one. And then near Carnaby Street, I grabbed these two images. There's not a lot to them. They're just meh. Nah. I think I was just desperate to try and get a roll and just try and get these all done by the end of the day and I knew I needed to snap them running out of dark light, which is weird because that's not what you normally say. You normally say the opposite. I'm running out of light, I've got to shoot these before it gets too dark, but I was there to shoot in the dark. And I've got about eight frames at this point, so I think, okay, well, we've got to commit to daylight now and let's just see what we can pull back from that. So I headed back to Clapham, to SW Darwin, because they opened at 10. And if I'm gonna get this all done by the end of the day, I need someone who's efficient, knows what they're doing, because if I try and do it myself, I'm gonna bugger it up. So I head off there, jump on a bus too, no real images, I've got a couple to burn, and I just burn these last few at the end. Cine Steel 800T wasn't the best film shot for these, but I smashed through the last bit of the roll and took it into the darkroom and headed back home. 12 o'clock comes. And I go pick up my cine still. I take it back to the studio and we start the scanning process. Now, if you're really into your film photography, and I'm not saying I am, I'm getting into it, which is probably why I've got this sort of young obsession. Scanning your own film is sort of so rewarding, whether it's a flatbed or a DSLR, whatever it is, there's a process to it. It's like when you make a coffee, you can actually have a coffee that's not great, but if it takes you some time and you enjoy the process, it kind of removes how good it tastes because you've made it yourself, it's been that whole sort of experience. And that's what scanning does. Unfortunately, you get dust everywhere and stuff like that, and you might have to do a bit of removal in post, which I have done to some of these. So I'm using here the Lycra SL2 and a macro lens, and we're getting nice and close to these images and trying to bring out what we can, the sharpness, the detail. It's just so much more than you can get off any flatbed scan. So we whip it into Lightroom, touch them up, and that's kind of the images that you've seen today. I guess out of these, there's probably about eight to 10 that I really like. The rest were a bit just rubbish. So that was Cine Still 800T in London at night. Yeah, see you in the next one.